there it go about the formite solutions here in this unified video i'm going to explain every option of the networks parameters we have on the unify ecosystem so if you go into settings and then on the left side there's networks and you click new virtual network you have all these options here and you might not know every piece of it what does it mean I'm going to explain it now. The first thing we have is Unify Network Name. This is the place where you name the network. It doesn't affect how the network works. It doesn't affect anything. It's just a name. So choose the name wisely. So you will use it, that name on the other options later on. The next one is the router. This means when we create the subnet and that subnet has the gateway that computers will use, the layer three IP address on the interface, that interface has to live somewhere. So here we are going to choose where these interfaces are going to be hosted. If you have multiple route router capabilities, uh, unified devices like layer three switches, the routers and everything are connected, adopted into this one side, you will have all of them in this list and you can choose one of them to host the IP address of the interface. If you choose the third party gateway, it's just a VLAN layer two, it's just a VLAN. So any routing has to be done by other devices outside of the unified ecosystem because because you're choosing not to have the interface on this device, on the Unify device. Let's go back to the Unify Express. Here is the actual IP address of the Unify layer three interface that we are going to host on the Unify Express in our case. And this little button here refreshes the subnet. What I mean by that, if you click that, look what happens with the third octet on the IP address, it changes. So it's kind of randomizes the subnet because if you don't like the subnet you have, you can just click it and it will change the third octet. So it will be a different subnet. And keep in mind, it will change the IP range as well, as well as the DHCP settings later on. Outer scale means that it will choose the IP address and the subnet and everything for you. You can disable that if you don't want. If you want to control the DHCP settings, you want to disable that. Let's scroll down. So this is going to be the gateway IP address that computers will use on the subnet when they are on the subnet to reach out the Unify Express and go out outside the Unify Express, let's say to the internet. This is the broadcast IP address. Every subnet has that. This is the usable IP addresses within the subnet. 249 because one IP address is already being used. This is the range and this is the subnet mask. By the way, the net mask less 24 is exactly the subnet mask. If you change that, let's say to uh, 23, it will be 254 on the third octet. You see? But uh, you probably want to use slash 24. That's what most of the subnets are on the small business or home. Let's switch the settings to the manual. VLAN ID. The VLAN ID, every, every subnet on the Unify ecosystem has the VLAN ID. Unify ecosystem doesn't support layer three interfaces on their devices. You have to create the switch virtual interface, which is what we are doing right now, and then assign that interface to the router, in our case, Unify Express. Now, when we tag this subnet with the VLAN ID 2, every time this traffic from this subnet going to leave the Unify Express, let's say, goes to another device, uh, another the access point or the switch, if our egress interface is the trunk, meaning supports multiple VLANs, then our traffic will be tagged as VLAN ID 2, okay? This is important because if we want to pass multiple VLANs through one cable, we have to use VLAN ID tags. And let's say you have VLAN ID 2, VLAN ID 3, and 4. The other device that is connected to our Unify device has to also support these VLANs. If it's the same Unify ecosystem, meaning the same site and the device is adopted within the same Unify dashboard, then that's done automatically. You don't have to choose anything. That switch, the access point, or any other device that is connected to our Unify Express already knows about these uh, VLAN IDs. The guest network. When you choose that the subnet is supposed to be guest network, it will create this separation, isolation between LAN and the guest. And that is on the access layer, access rule sets uh, level, should I say. If you go into security and traffic and firewall rules, there is a special place for the guest traffic. You see how there is a guest, right? When you choose the subnet to be guest, 
This is where you have the rules for that guest subnet. It's completely isolated, completely different from the LAN. Let's go back to the networks. The next one is the isolate network. If you isolate the network, it works just like the guests, but it falls under the same rule set as the LAN traffic. So for example, guest traffic is gonna be managed by the rule set under the guests, but the isolated network is gonna be here. So when we isolate the subnet, Unify will put the extra rule sets here on this dashboard so that they can separate the traffic that you marked as isolated traffic from the rest of the line. You got it, right? Now, let's continue. Allow internet access. What does this do is that it allows the access to the internet plus it configures the network address translations if there is a need for that plus it allows the incoming traffic from the outside, which is basically always there. When you enable a lot of internet access, it will configure the NAT, which by default translates everything. It matches any traffic, at least on the current version. But if you choose to do the manual NAT, that's not going to work. If you allow the internet access, this is only allowing the internet access. Your NAT connections, NAT configuration, let's go into routing. If your NAT doesn't say auto here, then you need to configure the NAT separately after you enable the internet. Let's say we disable, let me show it to you. Let's say I created the new subnet and I enable the internet access, right? If I go into routing NAT and I disable this and I make it custom, right? No, not custom. I'm going to off it. I don't have the NAT rules anymore. So even though I enable the internet on the network here that says allow internet access, I still don't have the internet. Why? Because I'm allowing to go outside, but I'm not translating the traffic and the ISP doesn't have a clue about my private IP addresses. So this won't work. I have to create the NAT separately after that, unless, unless I use the auto NAT, which by default is enabled. Let's continue. Content filtering. Some of the traffic will be filtered and you won't be able to access the certain resources. For example, on, if you mark as a work traffic, it will block the explicit uh, adult uh, videos, malicious domains, search engines, and YouTube set will be set to safe mode. And if you choose family, it's gonna be the same, but additionally, it will block the VPN traffic. And keep in mind, the Wi-Fi calling on your smartphone is always a VPN traffic, IGMP snooping. If you enable this, then switches, the unified switches and the routers will handle the multicast traffic as the multicast traffic. But if you disable that, which is disabled by default, then every multicast traffic in the unified ecosystem on the switches and routers will be handled as the broadcast. Not the multicast, but broadcast. Meaning if you're sending the multicast traffic to specific multicast address and you're hoping that only two or three devices will receive this and the switch will send out this multicast traffic only through these three switch ports, that's not going to happen if, it is, if this is disabled because the multicast traffic will be handled as the broadcast traffic, meaning switch will broadcast that traffic from all the ports, from all across the switches within that broadcast domain, within that VLAN, should I say, in the unified ecosystem. MDNS, which is multicast DNS. Just like the broadcast, the multicast is not going through the router by default. So when you send the multicast traffic, it's within the broadcast domain, within the one VLAN only. So if you have Apple TV on the IoT subnet on a different network, and your iPhone is on the user, subnet on the user network, not supposed to be because smartphone is still IoT, but if it is, and the MDNS is not enabled on both networks, you're streaming the Apple TV streaming. You know how you can stream the screen or the audio from your iPhone to the Apple TV? That's not going to work. You need to enable MDNS on all the networks where you have the source and the destination device that should talk to each other through the multicast uh, protocol. The DHCP server, 
You see how this is grayed out? Because this is enabled here. If I uncheck auto scale network, then I can control all the DHCP options. And let's see what we have here. First of all, we can disable the DHCP server completely if we want to. Let's say you have a DHCP server on the same broadcast domain, on the same subnet, and you don't need the DHCP server on the router anymore, right? Let's say you use the DHCP server from Windows or, or, or from the firewall or from anything else. You can disable it here. Relay. Now, relay means that there is a DHCP server, but not within the same subnet, but it's on a different subnet. In that case, let's say our subnet is uh, 192.168.2.1, right? And if our DHCP server is on a completely different subnet, like this IP, for example, I can add this as the relay agent. So now when DHCP client sends the traffic that requesting the IP address from the DHCP server, instead of dropping because Unify doesn't have the DHCP service running on it, Unify will forward this traffic to the IP address from this list. And that server, if there is a DHCP server, will respond and delivers the traffic back to the client that is trying to get the IP address from the DHCP server. Okay, that's how it works. And of course, you can have the DHCP server itself. Now, here's the range. Where do we start releasing the IP address and where do we stop? Now, keep in mind, you cannot exclude the IP address from within the range. You cannot be exclude from the beginning, like before 20, for example, are excluded, and after 200 or after 220 if you want to. But you cannot exclude the IP within middle of the range. That is possible on many of the DHP servers, but not here. DHP guarding. So DHP guarding means that uh, if there is a rogue DHP server that is responding to the DHP clients to deliver the man in the middle attack, it won't work because we are saying this is the only DHP service that we are running on, the original DHP server. So anything not in here will not be able to respond to the DHP clients. Now below are predefined DHP options. This is, I think, uh, option 42. You can deliver the NTP servers to your host. You can deliver the network boot. So if, if the device is booting from the network and is expecting to find the file of the operating system, this is the way to do it. Time offset is to correct time of NTP through several seconds. Option 43 is the vendor-specific DHCP option. So if you have, for example, a Yelling uh, IP phone and you want to boot uh, configuration for that phone from the TFTP server. You choose the IP, you put the IP address here of the TFTP server, and when the, the, when the Yelling phone gets the IP address, it will also get the IP address of the TFTP server, and the phone, IP phone, will know that the option 43 is for the TFTP server with the configuration. This is one of the ways to do it. The WPAD server is just a proxy URL. You know, your browser or your system can have the proxy link to use it as a proxy. That link can be delivered through the AD of Windows or through the different policies, but also can be delivered through the DSP server. And of course, TFTP server, it's just a TFTP server. This is also one of the DSP options. And the ping conflict detection is the additional conflict detection. DHP already has that. This is just additional one. Gateway auto means that Whatever IP we put here as the host address is going to be the gateway for the clients. We can change that. We can put different IP, but keep in mind, they, that IP has to be real gateway for the computer. So most of the time it's going to be auto on your case. DNS server is the same, but for DNS, if you want custom DNS, you can choose anything you want. If you do auto, then the Unify router will be the DNS server for the clients and the Unify will be responsible for translating the A records into IP addresses, for example, A requests of the DNS into the IP address. This time is by default 24 hours. For the wireless guest, you want to make two hours, but for the rest of the networks, it can be 24 hours. No problem there. Also, domain name. Whatever you put here as a suffix, for example, local, domain, right? Anytime host gets the IP address, this is going to be a suffix at the end of the host name. So if the host name is host1, this is going to be full host name if we put the local domain here as the domain name. 
and of course you have custom DHCP options if you have any options you want to give out to the clients and is not predefined here you can do it from here and this was the as I could be possibly make smallest shortest video explaining the networks options on the unified ecosystem thanks for watching